Hi everyone, so today um, is our fourth week in our campaign series Let My People Go. Um, welcome back. I trust that you had a lovely time last week um, discussing the person and the promises of God and also the processes of how He deals with us and through um, our disappointments. Um, at this time you need no introduction as you more or less know what to expect. So um, yeah, I just want to invite you again to open up and feel free to share and um, enjoy your time together. Enjoy um, this time as friends together. The year is also rushing towards an end. Um, and uh, well, before we know it, um, we're into uh, exams and everything. So um, I'm going to pray for us and let's start. Um, yeah. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can meet together again as friends. Lord, we thank you for friendship. We thank you that we are able just to share with one another, Lord. And I um, thank you also for your word, Lord, that you give to us, that gives life, that um, we can compare our lives and, and, and um, view it in light of your word. And I ask, Lord, through that, that you would reveal your truth and that you would come and transform us um, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so over the last couple of weeks, we looked at the life of Moses and got, how God used him um, to set the people uh, um, the, of Israel free from the end of the Egyptians. And um, last week we discussed how the person of God and God's promises align to our lives, but also how God's processes work within our lives. Often we like God's person and we see that he's good. We like the promises because it gives us hope, but we do not always enjoy the processes which we go through in life. And um, Moses went to Pharaoh, he told him that he had a word from God that he should let his people go, that um, they can worship him in the wilderness. But instead of it getting better, it actually grew worse. And um, Moses was, was very disappointed um, through that. And um, we see that God then gives him a promise that he will set them free from the hands of the Egyptians through judging the Egyptians with um, his mighty power. Often we speak of God as a God that loves to save um, is a God of love, but we do not like to speak about the judgment of God. And we see in this story actually that God judges the Egyptians in order to save his people. The Egyptians saw the saving power of God, but to them it meant judgment. And today we're going to look a bit more at that. So as the story progresses, we see Moses again going to Pharaoh, telling him, let God's people go that they may worship him in the wilderness. But Pharaoh, because his heart was hard, he refused. And um, Moses, what he does is he struck, strikes the, gro the ground with his staff and the dust turns to gnats. And there were gnats everywhere. Um, it, it literally looked like nighttime because there were so many gnats. And um, what we see is that the magicians come up to Pharaoh and they tell, the, they tell him he, they could not duplicate this miracle. That this is truly an act of God, that this miracle is the finger of God that is at hand. And there's a place where the world's power can compare to God's power, but here the world couldn't compare anymore. They recognized that this was an act of God. But even still, Pharaoh's heart was hard. Because of his pride, because of his arrogance, he was still not willing to let God's people go. Now, what's very interesting to note is from the fourth plague onwards, um, Moses sends the people of Israel away to go and stay in the land of Goshen, which means that um, for the first three plagues, they had to endure the same um, conditions as the Egyptians. And sometimes it's like that. We also endure hardship. We endure, we endure even um, acts of judgment from God in order for or into display his power so that people might get saved and set free. And um, we see the Hebrews go and live in the land of Goshen and the Lord sends flies to face the, the land of Egypt. And um, now we see Pharaoh starting to negotiate. He tells Moses that um, the people can worship, but can't they just worship within the land? And Moses has, Moses has to negotiate, but he's not willing to surrender to God's terms. And um, how often are people like that? They say, um, yes, we can go, but on my terms, as long as I'm still in control, as long as I have the power, um, you can do what you want. But until it affects me personally, I'm not willing to let go of that power. So that was the, fifth, the fourth plague. The fifth plague, what happens is the Egyptians' livestock 
started to die. Their horses, their cattle, um, their donkeys, everything died. And the, the Hebrew people, their livestock were healthy. And um, this was a, a big blow for the Egyptians. Um, suddenly, they, they, it affected their wealth. And it hit them where it hurt most. And then the sixth plague, we see boils breaking out um, over every man, every Egyptian. And it was so, so severe that the, the magicians, that um, they couldn't even stand before Moses because of these boils. Um, hectic, hectic sickness and boils that, that um, were painful were um, dealt to the, to the Egyptians. And... Um, the, the Hebrews, they were safe in the land of Goshen with these three. So we see Pharaoh's response to all of this. He started negotiating, but still his heart was hard. And there's actually a progression where it starts out, where it says Pharaoh's heart, heart, he hardened his heart. At the end of the sixth plague, it says, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Okay, so after um, Pharaoh did not want to let the people go after six plagues. We see that um, God tells Moses that he is going to display his power so that all the world will know that he is God, that people will proclaim the power of God among the nations. And, um, and what happens next is that um, God sends hail to destroy the land of Egypt. Hail has never as has never been seen since the rise of Egypt as a nation. And what's interesting to note is that there were Egyptians who started to fear the Lord and heeded to um, the Moses's warning. They hid away everything that they owned. They hid away the the, the livestock that they probably had bought from the um, the Hebrews at the time after all their livestock had died. But um, they hid it away, and the Hebrews also hid away their livestock and. What we see is um, those who did not fear the Lord, they had to bear the consequences of, of um, this hail and this destruction. And um, still, even in the midst of this, Pharaoh was not willing to let the people go. His heart was hard. And, um, and then the eighth plague came. And um, what happened was every green plant, every tree was struck down by the, the hail. And um, then the Lord sent locusts, a swarm of locusts, that devoured every green thing within the land. And at this stage, the Egyptians started pleading with Pharaoh to send the people out into the wilderness, to let them go, because they have nothing left to lose. They, their livestock had died, um, all the trees were demolished and destroyed, and now every green thing within the land was devoured by locusts. But still Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not let the people go. The Lord sent darkness over the land, and it became so dark that you could not move. You could not see. It says it became so dark that you could feel the darkness. And um, within that time, the people started to cry out. They realized that they're in trouble. And um, God was about to display his power as, as it has never been seen before. And it was with the final plague that God showed his power and his mercy to the Hebrews. Um, what we see is a very interesting thing. God says he's going to destroy and kill every firstborn male of the Egyptians. But he reveals something very interesting. He shows that it's possible for a substitute to be given in our place to take the judgment of God. And um, God instructs his people to, to slaughter a lamb. Every family had to slaughter a lamb together. And that this lamb um, was to be eaten. They basically had to have a bride together. They had to eat it in haste as this was the Passover lamb. So when the angel of death came to kill the firstborn of the Egyptians, um, the Hebrews had to, they had to cover their doorposts in the blood of this lamb. And when the angel of death saw the blood, he passed over and he did not destroy the firstborn within that house. And how amazing is that? That God gives a substitute to receive the punishment that, that he gave to the, to the Egyptians. He gives a substitute for that, pointing to a perfect lamb that would be slain one day for our judgment, um, which we will get to later in the story. So just imagine what this must have been like for that night. You, you've seen the power of God, the, the, the Hebrews and the um, and the 
the, the Egyptians together. They've seen the power of God and you hear um, your neighbors screaming and shouting as their firstborns were dying. But you realize that the mercy of God came over you and you just, um, it, it, there was like a, a reverence and a fear that came upon every soul. And it, it wasn't until this moment as well that Pharaoh decided to let the people of Israel go. When his own son got struck, he decided that it was enough, it was finished, and he let the Hebrews go. And, um, and, and the, the death of the firstborn was enough for the freedom of the people. And that points towards a sign. One day God sending his firstborn son into the world as a sacrifice um, that can take the punishment of God, the judgment of God, for his people to be set free. So often we would look at the story and we're so quick to judge Pharaoh and think, but why was his heart hard? Why didn't he just let the people go? Like Pharaoh is such a stupid guy. Um, all of the people suffered because of his ignorance and his pride. But reading this story, I just realized that I'm much more like Pharaoh than I am like the Hebrews and then that I am like Moses. How often it is that we try to ask God to prove himself to us before we would surrender and humble ourselves before him. Um, of, so often we have pharaohs within our own hearts that stop us from, from um, living in the freedom that God has for us. And one of the biggest pharaohs we have is our pride that um, we say, but Lord, I'm not going to surrender. I'm going to do this on my terms. Um, I'll negotiate with you, um, but knowing that the Lord, what the Lord has spoken, and um, and it's not, and and then it takes it takes hardship, it takes trials in our life, only for us to realize that that God's desire is to set us free and to let us go. And um, yeah, you know, maybe you sit in this group and 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 you've seen the power of God before. You've seen the way that he's moved, maybe in a friend's life, someone's life that's transformed. You might have seen it through difficult circumstances. And when it goes tough, like Pharaoh, you can cry out and you can say, okay, but, but God, please, um, I've actually wronged you. But then until things go back to normal, then, um, then your heart gets hardened again. But um, what is it that God requires of you today? Perhaps he's calling you also to a place of humility. The, the Bible tells us that God opposes the proud like he did Pharaoh, but he gives grace to the humble. And it's only when we humble ourselves before him and we come with humility saying, but God, I cannot do this anymore. Um, I give up. I surrender to your ways. Have your way in my life that his grace is extended to us so that we can, can, can know the freedom and the life that he has for us. So we are going to go into a group discussion and, um, yeah, I really um, trust that you guys will be vulnerable as well. Like I said, what you put into this is what you're going to get out. But um, yeah, I trust that the Holy Spirit also guide the conversations. Well, let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for your word, Lord, that serves also as a warning to us, Lord, that, that um, it judges the attitudes of our hearts, Lord. It judges our motives, Lord, and it brings it to the table, and um, Lord, I pray that it would do just that, Lord, that you would expose our hearts and our, um, yes, Lord, the attitudes and the motives of our hearts, that you would expose it, Lord, and also reveal the pharaohs in our hearts that hold us back from receiving the freedom that you have for us. Lord, I pray for every person within the groups and ask, Holy Spirit, that you would touch our lives, that you would come and transform us and that you would set us free to know you, Lord God. And even those, Lord, who doubt you, Lord, who sit, who's sitting in these groups, Lord, um, I pray that they would see your power, Lord, that they would be able to recognize it, Lord, even if it's not in their life alone, but in the lives of those around them also, Lord God. I pray for a revelation of who you are, and I pray that you would come and bring us to a place of, of humility and of um, submission to your will, Lord. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.